Hello. This presentation is about Marie Sklodowska Curie postdoctoral fellowship impact and dissemination aspects. The presentation, as such, was uh, was given as part of the uh, My Marie Curie post postdoc experience. Um, organized by the Agency for Mobility and EU Programs of the Ministry of Science and Education of the Republic of Croatia on 21st uh, July 2021 with some 40 participants. The beautiful scenery behind me uh, is on the University of Nottingham uh, Jubilee campus, so I wanted you to enjoy as, as I'm enjoying now. Uh, this is the program of the uh, of the presentations. Uh, if you want to hear more about uh, postdoctoral fellowship tips and tricks, the right click is uh, my YouTube channel, 30, 30 minute long uh, video. And the, la the left link is on my project. I won't be bothering you with too many unimportant details for this uh, presentation on impact. Um, I'm a social linguist. I deal with uh, interactions between language and society. My uh, postdoctoral uh, fellowship focuses on spelling reforms and uh, changes. Uh, for instance, new standard languages, uh, language ideology links, etc. The title is uh, on your screen and the link provided uh, where you can find more about the project. Um, I will be talking about four parts, four things here uh, about the general uh, actions, impact and dissemination section. Uh, about spellfect impact and dissemin dissemination aspects, uh, how reviewers uh, saw my uh, um, my strengths and my weaknesses, and I will be uh, sharing some top hints regarding this part. First of all, impact is relevant to you it brings you 30% of the total score. The other European Commission's program in the Excellence Science Pillar, so-called ERC grants, does not assess uh, impact at all. The only thing those evaluators are interested in is uh, the quality of, of yourself as a researcher and the quality of research proposal. But here, it brings you 30% of the score. Why is impact relevant here? Uh, well, I will answer that question very soon, and I think you will be convinced. Uh, what does it actually mean to have a, a strong impact of your proposal? Well, it means your research uh, uh, proposal is capable of influencing the society. Uh, the more correct term, uh, instead of uh, using uh, the society, would be stakeholders. So who are your stakeholders? Uh, of course, it depends on your uh, on your research uh, idea. Uh, most certainly, uh, it's um, other researchers, but it could be also uh, the public uh, media, journalists, politicians, uh, etc., students, etc. The more stakeholders you have, the better for you. I posted a question for my audience. Who do you think the most important stakeholder of your MSCA project is? And these are the responses I got. Industry, general public, other researchers, evaluators, taxpayers, students, etc. Think twice. Are they really your the most important uh, stakeholder? Uh, one participant knew the answer. It is you. This is not a joke. I, I will prove it. This is the official uh, statement of the European uh, Commission, copied from their from its uh, guidelines on the objectives of of the MSCA Postdoc Fellowship. 
Uh, the, object the objective is to foster excellence in research, yes, uh, but check the first part of the sentence. It is you, and you are the first one mentioned. They want to fund your acquiring new skills and developing your career. So now you can see why impact is relevant in the MSGA program. It's relevant because um, you and your future career are in the center of this, of this scholarship. So being explicit on your MSCA impact um, is all about selling yourself to your stakeholders. I'm pointing this out because I used to overlook this aspect. I thought the only thing you need to get the funds is to have a superb uh, research uh, hypothesis and super cool idea, and I couldn't have been more wrong. I'm using English uh, terms stakeholders and selling yourself uh, that belongs to project management um, because I want you to start thinking uh, about your research through the eyes of project management. The impact section of your proposal uh, is consisted of three subsections. The first is uh, about the most important stakeholder, which is you. Uh, and here you're, you need to explain how your project affects your career perspectives and employability. And second, your skill development. In Horizon 2020, um, that preceded the current uh, funding program, Horizon Europe, the, this subsection changed uh, the title, nothing uh, considerably. The blue uh, is the old title, basically nothing changed. Uh, they just emphasize the aspect of uh, employability. This is the second impact section. Remember, the first impact was you, your career, employability, and skill development. Here, you describe all your other project stakeholders. These are the ones who, who are you're going to uh, disseminate uh, the outputs to uh, research groups, conference audiences, students, etc., or communicate to. Uh, the public, the media, uh, policymakers, uh, politicians. Uh, notice the terminological difference between dissemination and exploitation and communication. Dissemination uh, and exploitation anticipate some, some expertise uh, other researchers. Uh, while communication is talking to those who are not directly linked to your project, which could be politicians, the public, journalists. Once again, the first impact was about you. The second impact was about your project stakeholders. And the third and the last one is about all about glorification of your impacts. This is where you're supposed to shine. Now I will uh, talk about uh, my spellfect impacts. Uh, don't forget the Horizon 2020 and the Horizon Europe uh, programs um, uh, differ in uh, impact subsections. Uh, under the first impact, uh, I briefly presented uh, how this project would affect my career in uh, two short term, two medium term, and two long term career prospects. Um, I mentioned, for instance, media attention and high citation index as my long-term impacts. As I uh, anticipate the whole project idea on language ideology, language conflict is something that is relevant to the general audience. And um, it is popular to, to talk about these uh, things. Uh, you don't have much space. Uh, Impact, the whole impact section is uh, between 2.5 to 3 pages long. So uh, as you don't have enough uh, uh, alliance to, to say everything you would like to, uh, be very straightforward uh, uh, and you have no space to, uh, to beat around the bush. Uh, here is my um, last sentence uh, as a conclusion. 
Uh, basically, I repeated uh, in a one long sentence everything I have previously said. Uh, the whole project proposal is very condensedly uh, uh, written. So these are my top uh, 10 condensed pages I've ever written in my life. Um, I won't read it, but you, you can you can read it uh, on your outpace uh, to see how I managed to include everything in this first part. By the way, the ac acronym LPP stands for Language uh, Policy and Planning. Uh, every acronym should be uh, explained. I did it, but not here. Uh, summer previous text. The impact, the second impact is about my project uh, stakeholders. In uh, 2019, this section was uh, about uh, internal, intrinsic stakeholders. Now includes all the stakeholders, both intrinsic and extrinsic, internal and external. Uh, here I named um, all the conferences I'm going to visit, journals and publishers I'm going to send uh, my manuscripts to, um, since I plan to organize a panel discussion. Um, I reveal the names of my guests uh, that I will invite and why uh, they're relevant. I explained um, how I will network with my stakeholders, research groups, uh, research associations. Also, this is the part where I explained the intellectual property of my uh, research outputs. The third impact um, is in Horizon 2020, it was about external uh, stakeholders. Now it's, uh, it, 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 it has changed. Um, uh, I described here um, uh, about my public engagements. Uh, I'm going to have a public talks, uh, um, new Wikipedia articles and updated the old ones. Um, my interviews, uh, website of my project. Uh, it might s sound like a joke now, but uh, I actually played a game with my uh, reviewers. I told them that if I got this project funded, I would promote the MSCA program in Croatia uh, to help other early career researchers. Uh, in other words, I'm um, at this very presentation uh, that I'm having now is one of my project deliverables, and you are my uh, project uh, impact stakeholders. Now I would like to sh to show you uh, how evaluate evaluators uh, saw my impact. I got 96% of the maximum score uh, of the proposal. Funding threshold was about 92 or 93 percent, I can't recall exactly. Each of the three main parts, excellence, impact, and implementation, had a maximum score of 5.0, and I got 4.8 for each of them. This is a summary of my strengths and uh, weaknesses for all three uh, sections. Under the impact part, my uh, project proposal um, gained uh, 10 strengths and one weakness. Uh, this is the list of, uh, this is how you get your results, uh, how it looks like. Um, so I my, my 10 strengths and one weakness, I won't be reading them out. Um, you can analyze them. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, they gave me feedback on uh, each of the three impact sections. I managed to convince them about my career prospects, the journals, conferences, uh, roundtable, and uh, with the details I provided. Um, a weakness of mine that I didn't sufficiently present um, is the impact uh, deliver de deliverables not adequately presented in the Gantt chart. Basically, I disagree with them. Uh, all impact deliverables were there in the Gantt chart. The problem for them was, as far as I can say now, um, maybe I had too many uh, impact deliverables. 
and um, I, uh, I used to group them. Um, for instance, D 2.3, field work interviews, Wikipedia article updated, poster presentation game. So maybe it was confusing for them, but um, I, I did uh, all the deliverables in the Gantt chart. This is the part of my presentation where I'll be um, talking about uh, the final hints I have for you. First is identify your stakeholders. Um, thinking on project stakeholders demands a different way of thinking. If you're not familiar with it, uh, either find a trusted friend or a colleague or educate yourself. Uh, this is important. You have to know exactly what your stakeholders are. Are there some research groups, uh, associations, other active research projects that you can network with? Second top hint, uh, it, it follows the first one. After you have identified your stakeholders, specify how exactly your project is linked to the identified stakeholders. Can you take a secondment to acquire some knowledge related to your project objectives? Is there a cost action on the topic close to your planned research? Can you organize um, a panel discussion as well, round table, conference, it's, it's too much work. Uh, can you organize uh, to hold a lecture to some relevant group of experts? Uh, why are some journals the best place for you to publish your results? The, the third impact, uh, be honest now and answer yourself the following question. Uh, what prevents you to apply for some job position now of your wish? Some position, job position at university or some institute. You might answer on this question, well, I might uh, improve my communication skills. I might uh, need to do some training um, on um, public speaking, leadership, uh, management skills, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, these answers uh, you provided are the ones you need to do the training uh, during the, the postdoc fellowship. Name those. Uh, skills that you like to acquire. The last hint is you might be uh, considering this as the top hint, but do not allow your fears and handicaps uh, limit you in getting what you really want. Good luck everyone. Uh, don't forget to support this video by giving a thumb up uh, and clicking on this uh, sub subscribe button. Uh, in the first tutorial uh, on the MSA tips and tricks, uh, I got a third -ish thumbs up and nice comment so far. So this motivated me to create, to continue recording video on this subject. So thank you and best of luck.